In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you could quickly build an explainable AI dashboard in Python. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the explainable AI dashboard that we're going to be building today will be based on the explainer dashboard Python library. And so you could go ahead and go to the GitHub page where more details will be provided about this Python library. Here you can see an animated image of what the web application will look like. But before going there, let's first start by installing it. So you could either install it using pip or conda. And so I have already installed this on my computer. And let's have a look at what this explainer dashboard is all about. And so if you're using algorithms built using one of these Python libraries, then you could also make use of the explainer dashboard for quickly deploying a dashboard web application. Let's have a look. So this is generally what the web application will look like. So I'll provide you the link to this GitHub page as well. And some of the plots that will support the explainable AI are provided here. So as you may know, SHAP is a popular library in Python that provides you a glimpse of the underlying mechanism on how features contribute to the model's prediction performance. And so you could get a glimpse on the contribution of the features toward the prediction. And other plots that you could also create using this dashboard includes the permutation importance, meaning that if you shuffle a feature, will the model performance deteriorate? And so I've actually made a prior video about permutation and how that could be used to judge whether your model is robust or arise from chance prediction. And so you could also check that video out and I'll provide you a link to it. Another plot is the partial dependence plot. And as mentioned here, you could evaluate the contribution of the individual features on the model's performance. And other plots that will allow you to observe the contribution of features would be the SHAP interaction values. So it essentially decomposes the SHAP value into the direct effect an interaction has. And aside from that, you could also show the model performance plots. For classification models, you could display the model performance via precision plots, confusion matrix, ROC AUC plot, PR AUC plot, etc. And for regression models, you could show the goodness of fit plots, the residual plots, etc. Let's have a look further. And so here are some of the example code that you could use to build your dashboard app. And this is for the classification and this is for the regression. Okay. So you could check out the full details of this GitHub, which provides a lot of in-depth explanation on how you could implement this explainer dashboard. And so let me take you to the documentation of this library. And so the documentation is also another great resource that you could have a look at. It explains very well how you could implement the various functions provided by the explainer dashboard. As you can see here, and they do provide some code that you could just copy and paste into your script files and run. And so let me show you this explainer dashboard Heroku app. And this provides a very well laid out high level overview of what of some of the possible dashboards that you can create. And so this includes the classifier dashboard, the regression dashboard, the multi-class dashboard, and also the custom dashboard. And so the great thing about this website is that you could click on the example so that you could see the web app in action, or you could click on show code. And this will provide you with the code that you could just copy and paste, and you could modify to implement your explainer dashboard web application. Okay. And this is the custom one. And the custom one is a bit more sophisticated because you can customize the layout and the look of the dashboard web application. And it also provides you with information on how you could just install the library. All right, so let's have a look at the example dashboard. And this is the classification model. Let me reload it. So in this 
website. I'm not sure why the plots are not displayed. It's probably running in the background or it might take some time to load. Okay, so it's already loaded up. So probably the model was being trained and so nothing was shown. And now that the model has finished training, it is now displayed here. Okay, so why don't we create our own? Let me go back, go to show code and let's copy this. And I'll go to the Atom IDE, I'll create a new file. I'll call it app, or actually I'll call it classification app.py. I'll paste it there, save it, go to terminal. I'll first activate my Conda environment. And so feel free to activate your own Conda environment. Explainer dashboard. All right, and so I'm going to run this by typing in Python classification app.py. Enter. You can see here that the model was being trained and the various plots was being calculated. And so the Heroku app was probably running all of these calculations. All right, so now the dashboard it's finished and it is now available at the URL provided here or here. You could go to either one. So let me just copy the first one then. All right, and so this is the web application that is run locally on my own computer. So you can see the feature importance tab, the classification stats tab, individual predictions tab, what if, feature dependence, feature interactions, and also the decision tree. And you could also have a look at the positive class, the survived or the non-survived. Okay, and so the chat values and the permutation importance So you see here the relative importance of each features on the model's performance. Let's have a look at the classification stats. So here it's very interactive and you could adjust the various thresholds and the data will be accordingly updated. Okay. And this is the confusion matrix. Same here, you could assess the threshold. This is the precision plot. This is the classification plot. And also very interactive, the PRAUC plot and also the RLC AUC plot. So a great thing is that they also provide you with a description of the plot. So here they describe that RLC AUC plot is a trade-off between the false positive and false negative, while the PRAUC plot is a trade-off between precision and recall. They also have the lift curve, the cumulative precision, and as always, you could also adjust the threshold. Okay, let's have a look at the individual predictions. So you could scroll down here in the drop-down and have a look at the individual passengers, and you could have a look at which features contributed to the prediction of each of these passengers. And if you change the passenger, then the contribution will also change. Okay. This is the contribution of each feature on the model. Contributions table, how each feature contributes to the prediction. And you could get a relative percent on the effect of each feature on the model prediction. Okay, and this is what if, this is feature dependence, 
and you could have a look at the aggregate value of the shaft. And so essentially it looks just identical to the typical feature importance plot that you get from the Gini index when using the random forest. And so this is the aggregate view. So you could zoom in and have a look at the detailed view. And you can see the positive and the negative contributions of each feature on the model's performance. And when you add it up together in an aggregated view, it looks like the random forest gene index. And here on the shaft dependence, you can see the relationship between feature values and shaft value. If you hover on it, it provides you with some more detail, as you can see here. And you could also have this function of removing outliers. You click on it and outliers are removed. Okay, so very interactive. Let's have a look at the feature interactions. So you could display the interaction between features, sex, and passenger class. And then this is what you see. Or if you change, and then you also see the interactions of these two features. You could also add the particular passenger, and you get the updated interaction plot. Okay, let's have a look at the decision trees. All right, and so here you can see the individual decision tree inside the random forest. So this is something that typically you wouldn't see when you build a random forest model using scikit-learn. So you'll probably just see the end outcome. But with this dashboard, you could actually see how each of the trees are contributing to the model performance. And so here you see the baseline of the pooled results from decision trees inside the random forest. All right, and so this is the classification explainer dashboard. And you could do the same for the regression dashboard. And also you could play around with the multi-class dashboard as well as customizing your own dashboard here. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.